Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 1 to 5. It's the Gospel for Saturday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time, Year 2. St. Luke writes, One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields, and his disciples began to pick some ears of corn, rub them in their hands, and eat the grain. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. That's from Luke chapter 6 verses 1 to 5. And what does it suggest to us? Well, I think it is especially in our day that the objection of some of the Pharisees in today's Gospel appears rather odd. We read that one Sabbath Jesus was going through the cornfields and his disciples began to pick some ears of corn, rub them in their hands and eat the grain. Perhaps the disciples had had a busy morning with a little chance to eat. Our Lord may have spoken in the synagogue and ministered to the people. His disciples were hungry, and so they picked ears of corn for themselves as they were passing through the cornfields. For merely picking those ears of corn, they were accused by some of the Pharisees of violating the Sabbath rest. The Sabbath, of course, was a linchpin of the life of the chosen people and numerous regulations had slowly been developed to protect its observance by Jewish society. While these numerous regulations were absolutely excessive, as Christ pointed out, nevertheless, one question we ought to ask ourselves in our very secular day is, to what extent do we take the Sabbath which for the Christian is the Sunday at all seriously. The observance of the Sabbath by worship and rest from distracting work is one of the Ten Commandments. Our temptation is not to be like the Pharisees in their insistence on a multitude of regulations that in effect stifle the observance of the Sabbath. Our temptation is to ignore it The majority of people do not worship on the Sabbath. God is largely ignored on that day. The institution of the Sunday rest from normal everyday work is welcome by most, but simply as a day of rest with a little reference to God. Even here, many unhesitatingly forego that rest in order to work on some part-time salaried job overtime, extra work. Our gospel scene today indirectly reminds us of the very important place the observance of the Sabbath day should occupy in the lives of those who accept God's revelation. It should be observed as the Lord's day. What benefits would come from its observance? But more than anything, our Gospel passage brings before us the figure of Jesus. The Pharisees criticised our Lord for his disciples failing to observe the Sabbath in the way this was expected by them. Our Lord answered by setting their authority against that of David. David did not require what you are requiring, he said. This alone ought make you hesitant about what you choose to insist on. But more than anything, if David felt authorised to determine how the Sabbath was to be observed by him, how much more can the Son of Man determine the observance of the Sabbath? For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus, as he does time and again during his public ministry, places himself at the forefront and claims a unique and supreme authority. 
How striking this expression, being Lord of the Sabbath, must have seemed to the scribes and Pharisees. The Sabbath was sacred in all of society, and to protect its sanctity, numerous laws had been instituted. Yet here was someone claiming to be the Lord of the Sabbath. Our Lord himself, of course, observed and profoundly respected the Sabbath. We read that when he returned to his hometown, he went to the Sabbath, uh, to the synagogue rather, as he usually did. We read that during and throughout his public ministry, he went to the synagogues on the Sabbath and preached to the people. And here, he is claiming to be able and authorized to determine how the Sabbath is to be lived. He is Lord of the Sabbath, a title and office which the average scribe and Pharisee would think as applying to God alone. Yet Jesus used it of himself. We are reminded by our Lord's words of his claim to have all authority in heaven and on earth. He is Lord. We are also reminded that he himself is the heart and soul of the Sabbath. It is he whom we worship every Sunday. We ought to make the Sunday the Lord's day. Christ's day. And imagine, imagine the spiritual good that will come to both individuals and society if the Lord's day were truly to be observed. Anyone who has the ambition to grow in the Christian life must resolve on a plan a plan of spiritual growth, the means to take. There has to be a plan of life. Central to that plan must be the observance of the third commandment, that we keep the Sabbath day holy. And how are we to do this? We do it by placing God and His Son Jesus Christ at the center of the Sunday. It means participating in worship, which for the Catholic means participating in Holy Mass, and it means refraining from ordinary salaried work that could distract us from the purpose of the Sunday. Let us resolve to observe the Sabbath day so as to be able more easily to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and yes, Lord of the Sabbath too.